Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. Glory be to God. This is a Wednesday, and it is our Bible study day. Glory be to God. And we're going to just go before the throne of grace. We know that God have a word for us today. So let us go before the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come right now, Lord God, giving thanks, giving praise, Lord God, for this blessed day, Lord God. We give you all the glory because the glory all belongs to you, God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you touched us, God, this morning and allow us to wake up this morning and see a brand new day, a brand new faith, Father God. And we thank you that you gave your angel charge, Lord God, over us to keep us, God, in all, in all our ways. Father God, we thank you that we are resting in you or trusting in you, Lord God, that perfect peace, that perfect rest in you, knowing with confidence that you are able to do exceedingly, God, abundantly above then we can ask you or even thank her. Father, we thank you, Lord God, as we go in your word today, Lord God, that no distraction, no weapon form from the enemy gonna prosper, Lord God. In every tongue that rises and speaking and judging it right now, Lord God, we speak right now, Lord God, that those tongues be condemned. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for this blessed day, Lord God, that you know that you are God and you are above all other gods. And we know you sit high. You look down on each and every one of us. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that as we go forward, we have an ear to hear what you have to say. Lord God, I'm just your vessel right now. Lord God, touch my lips. Lord God, from the cold of your altar, Lord God. And Lord God, have your way, Holy Spirit. Lord, have your way today, Lord God. None of me, but all of you. Check every word that comes out of my mouth, every vocabulary word, Father God. Only the Holy Ghost having his way in me, Lord God. That hide me, Lord, that is none of me, but all of you, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, as we go forth in your word. We give you praise and we give you thanks for all things that we will receive it with good gladness, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. We just thank God for being so great and so good and so kind towards us that we're in a need of a Savior every day to rest in him. Today's message talking about today is entering into the into God's rest. Glory be to God. Entering into God's rest. Praise the Lord. And we know what that means. Entering into God's rest means only being confident that you trust him in every way, in all your ways. We trust the Lord. He said with all your heart and not lean to your understanding, your own understanding, but put your trust in the Lord, resting in him. We're going to go to Hebrews. We started out with Hebrews 4, and we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way and let him speak to us today, that life will be changed today. Turn around, Lord, set free and being delivered for anything that we may be facing today. The enemy, whatever he's trying to come against us, the word today is teaching us that we must put our rest in him and rest in him. He said, enter into my rest. Glory be to God. Let's go to Hebrews 4 chapter, and we're going to start with the first verse. And the first verse says this, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. And it said, any of you should seem to come short of it. Glory be to God. What do you mean? It's time now to know fear and mean fear whether or not I'm in right 
standing with God? Am I resting in him on every circumstance as I'm trusting in God for all things? Or am I leaning not to my understanding, but putting my trust in him? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So he said, lest we be what? Seeing not coming short of it. Does this mean to examine myself when the word come forth is giving us an opportunity to examine ourselves and know whether or not we're in the faith, whether we're resting in him. Let's go on. It says, for until us was the gospel preached, come on, as well as unto them. This is Paul telling them that the gospel was preached to them in Israel and all of them. It was preached to back in the late early Bible days until now the gospel are still being preached. Come on, let's hear what he said. He said, for unto us, come on, was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Come on. The gospel is being preached unto us now. The word of God is coming forth. But the word preached did not profit them. Glory be to God. The God, the same God back then, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory be to God. He's the same God. So what he's telling, teaching us today, the Holy Ghost is telling, are we resting? Are we entering into his rest? Because when we're entering into his rest, then we mean when the gospel is being preached to us, the word of God is coming forth. We must take that word and what? Stand on it by faith. And that means when you stand and believe and confident that what God, the word have said, then we, we believe. It. Because we know every word are is expired by God. Come on. It is inspired. It is inspired by God. So when we hear the word, is the instruction of do you believe it? When you believe it, you trust it, that the Lord is speaking to you. Glory be to God. So you rest on it. If he said he's your shepherd and you shall not want, rest on it. If he said I'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, rest in it. He said the gospel is being preached. But those back then, in the olden days, they didn't what? Israel did not what? Walk in it. They did not believe. Glory be to God. He said it didn't profit them anything. Let's go on. It says that. Let's go over that again. He said, but the word preached it did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith. There you go. When you hear this word, you got to believe. Because you know you're hearing God's voice. For the word is God. Come on. But the word in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. Come on. The word is God. That's what the word is saying. First John 1 tell us. But in the beginning was the word. The word was spoken. This word was spoken by words of God. From God. So that's why words matter. Say them no words matter. If he can get you to believe his word against what God words say, he can get you in unbelief. And what God is trying to do is bring us into the faith of trusting him. He said the word would preach to them. Moses and all the rest of them that came, the prophet that come. But they did not mix it with faith. Glory be to God. He said what? But being mixed, but they not, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. When you hear the word, take heed and apply. Like James said, not being just hearers of the word, but being what? Doers of God's word. When you hear the word, the word is there what? To correct you, direct you, guide you. But your faith got to believe. That it is true. God's word is true. Let's go on. It said, for we which have believed do enter. Come on. Into that, into rest. When you believe, 
then you in that rent. When you believe that what every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, then how we must live, that's what God says. You must not live by bread alone, but by every word. Glory be to God. Every word. Hallelujah. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And it says this. It says, for we which have believed do enter into the rest. Come on, as he said, as I have swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my wrath, although the work were finished from the foundation of the world, already it was done. Jesus Christ come on the scene, already God had already ordained how we must enter into that rest. He's been doing it from the beginning of time that he tried to bring Israel into that rest. And into that rest mean only being there trusting him. All he wanted them to do is just follow and trust me. Trust me at my word. Just follow and not complain. Not getting all away from what, what God said he would do. He would do in his word, would not go back home. He would do. His word will accomplish just what he said he would do. Glory be to God. Let's go on. And it said what? It was already done. But already been seen. Even when Christ already, God knew he was going to send his son from the beginning. He knew what the world was going to do. He knew what the people was going to do. He knew they were going to fall astray because he knew that he had the direction there for them to follow a commandment. And when we don't follow that commandment, we we get out of the realm of his rest. It, we get out of the rest. Come on. And they say it was already finished from the foundation of the world. When the beginning, that was the beginning when Jesus did what? He worked and he did the seven days and he said he rested. Because it was good. Everything he created was what? Good. Glory be to God. Let's go on. And he said, for he spoke in a certain part place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest. We just got through saying that. Rest the seventh day from all his work. Come on. And what, what he said, he's not trying to get us to work. He's, when Jesus done it and he rested, when he made the, the heavens and the earth, he said it was good. When he sent his son, Jesus Christ, and he went to the cross, come on, he was, his, his blood was atoning for all sin. Come on, he, he spoiled all principality of the enemy. Come on, all power was in his hand. He said, it is finished. Glory be to God. So whatever you're facing today, it's finished already. With your faith is anchored in the Lord, then you're entering into this, into that faith, into that rest. Glory be to God. You are already in the rest. When you know whatever is coming against you, you got a word to answer. And to give you rest. Come on. And you know that's God's word. When you hear his word, you hear his voice. When you obey his word, you go obey in his command. That's all God say. Trust me at my word. Trust me. Then you can enter into that rest. Glory be to God. You can enter into that rest. Let's go. Hold that right there. We're going to come back. Let's go to Matthew Come on, 11. Let's go there. In Matthew 11 and uh, 28. Let's go there. Let's get there. Glory be to God. God is calling us into this rest. We got to understand resting in him is only mean trusting, confident that God, you said it, I believe it. If you said it, I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Come on, wait on the Lord. If he said it in his word, stand on it, believe, keep believing, keep, keep believing, keep trusting. Come on, keep trusting it. Come on, let's go there. This is uh, Matthew 11 and, and um, 
We're going to start with the 28. He said, come unto me, all ye that what labor. When you're trying to labor, work this, this situation out, you can't fix it. That's why he said, rest in me. That means trust me that I can do all things are possible. Come on, through God. Through Christ Jesus, all things are possible. Because when you're in Christ and you're anchored in his son, then you are already rooted and grounded in God. You are entering into his rest. Once you in Christ and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you enter into that rest. You enter into that rest. Then he said what? Come all you that is labeled and heavy laden. That means burdened down. Come on. If you got heaviness on you today, here is Jesus that come unto me. And what? And I will give you rest from that situation. Knowing, glory be to God, that we cannot Sits. God sits how he looks down. And all he asks you to believe on my son. Accept him in what he already has done for you. Accept him. And know that what he's able. That when you enter into that trust in him. Then when you surrender and knowing that Lord I trust you. Not worry because he's already said to not even worry, but I already know what you need before you even, come on, ask me. He just wants you to trust the Lord, I trust you. Sometimes you don't, you can't say no, but God, I trust you. Fix it, Jesus, because you're dependent on him. Sometimes you just say, fix it, Lord, fix it. Because why? You are dependent on him to do so. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's continue this. It say, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Are we while we getting in this word and learn about the man that you say you trust? How do you how can you trust him if you never knew him? If you don't get to know him, he said, Learn of me, learn that I will do. When you learn it of him, then mean you trust him at his word. You trust. Everything that Christ have already said and already done. You trust that you already have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. And Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Come on. That I should not be what? Continue sinning. Sinning when I know that there is a Savior that already atoned for this blood. Already atoned for my sins. Glory be to God. He said what? Take me. My yoke upon you, unto you, upon you, and, and, and what? Learn of me. For I am meek, come on, and low in heart. Glory be to God. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. He just telling us, you will find that rest. If you enter into my, in my rest, and how we enter, trust. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not. Lean me. Don't try to fix it. Lean not to your own understanding. Because he already said, then your soul, you can find rest. What he said, the 30th verse said, for my yoke is easy. Come on. And my burdens is light. And what he said, when you put your trust in the Lord, when you rest, there and on his word and what he already have spoken then what it's easier you don't have to worry he said cash all your cares come on 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 me bring it to me this is what they're saying here bring it to me stop having burden yourself down with it when you got a savior come on that know all and can do all long as you in Christ, you got to believe that all is well. When Jesus said it was finished at the cross, he means it's all is well for those that trust in him. Come on. It's all is well for you. 
when you trust, I'm working. When you got faith, because faith pleases God, when you got faith, you can move mountains. And that means faith not in yourself, faith in what God already done said, already been spoken. The word has already been spoken from the from the foundation of the word. It's already. That means he, God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God back there when he was with Israel, leading them out of the wilderness. Come on. Leading them from Egypt. And, and, and when they was in the wilderness, he was there. But they just couldn't trust at his word. Because he said what? They heard the gospel, but they just didn't what? Believe. When we hear the word of God, stand on it. Not just hear it and it go out your ear, out, out one ear and out the other. Because what? When you hear right, you will do right and you will believe right. When you believe, when you believe it, when you hear it, then you will do right. Come on. Faith coming by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. So faith come by hearing the word. When you hear that word, then you must what? have faith that is God speaking the word to me then I must what obey the commandment I must walk in obedience entering into God's rest and when we enter into that rest glory be to God then we what we have peace we can have that rest let's go back to Hebrews 4 chapter and let's go back there but I wanted you to get to know the rest that he, Jesus said, come to me. Don't be burdened down with all of this cares of this world. Go, come before the throne. We're going to get it in it. Come before him and leave it at his feet. God said, let it, let it go. Enter into my rest. When we enter into his rest, we know what, no matter what you're going through, there's a word. He said, man should not live by bread alone. That means not by your physical thinking of life. But by every word. See, when you live by the word, it's a word for every area in your life. Even your finances. Come on. It's there. If you worry and burden down about your finances, then there's a word. God said, I'll supply all your needs according to your according to his riches. That means don't you worry about how it's going to get paid. Just trust me at my word. God, you say, see, he said, remind me of my word. You got to say, God, you say that you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. So, Lord God, fix it. Then he know in your heart, you got to believe in your heart that God will do just what he said. He said, my word will not go back void. It will come. Come on, wherever I send it to do. That means wherever behalf that God work it out in your life. Don't let the devil feel like you got to fear and grub. I got to get in a hurry. You say, Lord, I, I'm trusting in you. And you, what your word say. You already said, God, you know what I need. Come on. I don't care what it is. Whatever you going through, whatever you facing, God said in his word. That I know what you need before you are even ask me. But he said, ask. And it should be given. Ask in faith. Jesus told the disciples, have faith in God. That if you believe it, don't doubt in your heart when you believe, when you hear this gospel. Don't doubt in your heart. Just know. Come on. He said, what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Come on. You got to be in his righteousness. Because sin blocks you from God. And Satan know that. If he can continue you in sin. He know that blocks your prayer. God cannot reach you with sin. He cannot reach you with sin. Their practice in sin. Come on. When we know better. When you know it's wrong. And you continue to do it. Then you practice it. But if we sin and by mistake of making a mistake of sinning, then we know we got to have it. There is, that's Jesus Christ. The go to and ask for forgiveness. The blood of Jesus is constantly washing us. 
This word will cleanse us. That's what Jesus said. If we stay rooted, come on, to the vine, then the word will what? It will cleanse you. Come on, we're going to go on. Let's go on. And it says what? It said, for he spoke of a certain place of, of, of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work he did. Because he said it is good. When he sat out of rest and all he had created, he said it's good. So that means it's good in your life. When you trust that who the one that created you, made you, know all about you. Glory be to God. Then you are entering into that rest. That same rest when Jesus finished, God finished everything. His son come along when when. When he made man from the beginning and when the fall of Adam come, then what? Sin come in and then what? God already knew what, what it is. He gave them a choice like he's given us today. A, a choice to choose. God will not override your will. He didn't override, come on, uh, Adam and Eve's will. He gave them a commandment to obey like he's given us a choice. So they had a choice to obey God. He gave them the first commandment wouldn't what to do. And what did man do? Fail. Glory be to God. That's why we need a Savior. Jesus Christ. That's why we need him. Because we can't walk this walk on our own. We can't live in righteousness except we trust the Lord that he is the righteousness of us. Come on, we are the righteousness of him, of him through Jesus Christ. Only through Christ that you can have this right. And you can be in right place with God. When you enter into that rest, glory be to God. Let's go on. He said, fifth verse says, and in this place again, if they should enter, come on, into my rest. Sin, therefore, it remains that some must enter therein. You must enter. Come on. And they to whom it was first preached enter not because of what? Unbelief. Because of unbelief. Now, Israel and them didn't enter. And a lot of them died out. Come on. Didn't get to the promised land. Come on. Why? Because they didn't enter into their rest. When to entering into their rest, God said, trust me. They was in the wilderness, and all God wanted them to do was trust. And all he telling us today, trust me. Just trust me at my word. Glory be to God. Let's go on. He said what? They did not what? Enter. Because why? They first it was preached to them, but it entered not in them because of what? Unbelief. Right. When you hear God's word and then you go on and still do the same things that are against what God's word say, if you don't trust him, then what? You're not entering into the rest. You're entering into unbelief. And that's where Satan wants you. He don't want you to trust God. He already know God is God and he's big, but he don't trust. But he wanted to get you on his side to not to trust God. And see, faith is not what you see. See, Satan will get and show you and say, look at that, you, you're hungry, no food. Won't, won't tell you to pray and believe God and speak God's word. God, you said you'll supply my needs today. Come on. He'll give you each and every day your daily bread. That means whatever you need, he'll supply. He said according to his riches, not according to what we wanted. Come on. God is doing the guide, not us. Hallelujah. He said what? Again, he limits a seven, a certain day, saying to David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today if you what will 
hear his voice. Come on. And harden not your heart. This is what God telling us today. Enter into my word. Today as you hear this word, and we hear this gospel today, don't harden your heart against it. And say, let, devil, let the enemy tell you this. Well, it ain't happened yet. Because he's nothing but a show and tell. No, you tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. I trust in what God said. He'll supply my need. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait on him and trust him. Because I, I, I'm I, better off into, into his rest. I'm better. Because he'll give you peace in the midst of your soul. I'm a witness. He will. When things are not looking so great and not so good. But he would, him giving you the strength to go through. And trust me, he's there all the time. Working, even in the midst of your song. That's where he was doing Israel. Working with them. They could have been out of the wilderness, but unbelief come in. They could begin to complain and mumble like we do today. If it's not the way we want it, then we complain. Don't realize, okay, if you didn't have no grocery, but God brought you a meal today, give thanks. Don't worry about it tomorrow. Come on. Jesus said, God said that in his word. Don't worry about today for tomorrow, because tomorrow thinks for itself. You have faith today. Every day is a new faith. Glory be to God. And you keep the faith. We got to say in the faith. Hallelujah. It says this. Harden not your heart. For if Jesus have given them rest, then will he not afterward have what? Spoken of another day. Therefore remain therefore a rest to the people of God. He already gave us that rest when he gave us his son, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. When he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to bring us back and give us access into that peace. And that means that rest. And once you say, yes, Lord, come into my heart. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that God sent you to deliver me and set me free from the hands of the enemy. And once you said that and accept Jesus Christ, you entered into that rest. Glory be to God. You entered into that rest. That's what he said. And he said, for if Jesus had given them rest, and he did. When he went to the cross and he died on that cross and he said it is finished. Then those that believe enter right then into that rest. Hallelujah. Once you say, yes, Lord, I believe that you, your blood was atonement for my sin. You entered right then into that rest. You entered. Then you don't have nothing to worry about because you rested in the Lord. That means your company is that whatever we are facing, there's a God on our side. All he needs is your faith. And all Satan is after is your faith. He don't care about all what he calls you to do. He calls you to do that to, to get you away for the faith. Because he knows faith pleases God. Glory be to God. Faith pleases God. Let's go on. It says, for he, for he that is entered into his rest, come on, has also has ceased from his own work. Come on. As God did from his. When, when God created the earth and done all what he done, the seventh day he said he rested because the work was done. All was good. He said, looked over it and said it was good. Now, once you come into Christ as you accept him as he your Lord and Savior, and he changed your life around, you can continue to rest in that. No matter what the enemy try to show you, you are anchored in Jesus Christ. And all God said, I send my son that whosoever believe it. When you believe in that, then you enter into that rest. That's all. And Satan is after your faith. He 
reach out for your faith. If he can get you to not believe and trust, because he know faith pleases God. Faith can move mountains. So when you please the God, God can move all heaven and earth for you. Praise the Lord. He will do it. Glory be to God. Let's go on. He said, let us, us labor, therefore, to enter. Let's go back to 10. He said, for he that entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own work as God has did his. Come on, his work. He said, let us labor, therefore, to enter. Come on into the rest let us do more of what laboring to enter into that rest or still of what worry see when we worry about our situation when we worry about the cares of this world what's going on then we're not in enter into that rest we're not in the rest of god because we're worried worry mean you're laboring trying to figure it out you're laboring, trying to worry about it. You're, you're not trusting God for it. When you're not trusting God, you're laboring, trying to work it yourself. I'm, I may need to do more of this. I tell people, we, I didn't need more of uh, more Jesus. I need more of him. Still, the more money, I, his favor will give you what you need. He said, I'll supply him. According to my risk, I'll get you just what you need. If you enter into my risk, glory be to God, telling us what? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that risk. Let any man fall, come on, after the same example of unbelief, like Israel, some of them. They fell in unbelief. They wouldn't trust God when he brought they They didn't see, remember, all God brought them through the Red Sea, all the miracle God had done. Look around you. Look at how he's doing. He's giving you strength to get up every morning. Come on, that's a blessing. You may not have the, the, the material things that you may want, but you got to trust God to, to do just what he's going to do in your life. And he's taking care of you. He take care of his own. Let him take care. Don't look at the at the cares of this world. Look what everybody else getting in your eyes looking at that. God said, I supply your need according to what? His riches. See, a lot of people feel like I if I got a lot of things, I got riches. I'm blessed. I'm blessed because look, I, God give me health and strength. He protected me. He He let me, He allowed me to sleep at night. He put me to sleep and He watches over me. That's enough. He wakes me up every morning. I'm blessed. You are blessed when you are you are not sick. You're not down. And even if you're sick, He heals you. You are blessed. Come on. You are blessed of the Lord. Just know that this is where I must be entering in this rest. Begin to start trusting. Because he said, if you don't be like the others and fall into what? Unbelief. Don't let the enemy take you away from what God has already said. That he would do for you. Glory be to God. Let's go on. And they say, for the word of God is quick. Come on. That's me. When you get this word, it's quick to do what it is. When you come in with faith, it's quick. When you say, Lord, I hear you. You know, he showed me a word. I said, Lord, I hear you. I said, help me to believe. Help my unbelief on this area. Help me, Lord. I hear you. And I trust you. Trust you at your word. Come on. He said, for the word of God is quick and powerful, and it is. Come on. His word is what? Quick. That's mean when the Holy Spirit comes, when you hear that word, that word goes to work. When you got faith. 
when you trust in the Lord, that word, come on, swift right through there. It's quick. Come on, it works. And it's powerful and it's sharp. Come on. Then any two edged sword. Come on, it cuts. If I'm not right, that word come forth, and I I feel like, oh, that cut me. Sometimes I have to say, ow, that hurt, but that's all right. He cuts you, but he heals you. Glory be to God. Because he want to cut whatever not in there, cut it out. Come on. What's not healed, cut it out. Glory be to God. It cut, come on. It's sharpened, then any two edged sword. It peers even to the divining asunder of the soul and the spirit. Glory be to God. It does. When we hear this word, this is what God said. When you hear this word, come on. Get it. Let it let it work in you. Let it cleanse you. Because when it cleanses you, it's going to get it out. When you're doing something that you don't supposed to go do, that whatever hurt, let it hurt. Let it die. Come on. Because if it's not of God, let it die. It might hurt, but let it die. He's trying to what? Get it out. If he's trying to get other people that aren't supposed to be in your life, you hear the word of God telling you the way to live and way to walk, and that other person not walking in your direction, you might have to let it go. The word cut like a two-edged sword. It go deep. Come on. To the soul and the spirit. Glory be to God. And of the joint of the and the marrow and is a the sin is a discern, come on, of the thought, come on, and into of the heart, intent of the heart, glory be to God, to the intent of the heart. That means it cuts, and it gets in your heart and say, Lord, I, I'm sorry. See, when David messed up, he was what? Sorry for what he done. That's why they say he was a man after God's own heart because he was what? Sorry when he found out when God sent Nathan to him to tell him and show him where he was wrong at. Gave him an example. He said example of someone else to show him himself. And that was the word of God sending a word to him. And it made him what? Sorry. He said, Lord created me a clean heart. Come on. Blot out this wrongdoing that I'm doing, that I'm doing, or I had done. Come on. He went to cry out to God to deliver him from this. And God heard his heart because he was soft. That's how the word cut. When you hear the word and you hear it today, let God, come on. Heal you and cut what's out of there that don't supposed to be in that heart. It'll work. Come on, to the tenth of the heart. That means to the deepness of your heart. If it hurt, let it hurt because God trying to get rid of it. Because if it's sin and he trying to pull you away from it, you don't want to let it go, let it go. Let it go. Because the word of God wants to cleanse you. The word of God want to set you free. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's go on. It says, for the, we know that what? It, it tends unto the heart. It says, neither is there any creature uh, or, uh, that is not manifested in his sight. But all things are naked and what? Open unto the eye of him. Come on. With whom we have to do. Whatever it is, God going to reveal. That word going to cut you. Then what? Then you, when you allow it to cut you and get whatever it is, it'll open up your eyes that you will see. Sin. Come on. Sin then that we have a great high priest. You can see God. You can see him. Once you allow that word to get in there and cut whatever that's supposed to be, then you, your eyes are being open. Seeing that we have a high priest, come on, a great high priest, that's Jesus, 
that it that is passed into the heaven and Jesus the Son of God is that high priest. Come on. Let us hold fast our profession. Come on. Let us stand on that and trust in the Lord. Let us stand on that profession and hold fast. See, once the word get in there and begin to cut out, come on, like a two-edged sword, begin to cut what's not in there of God that's not supposed to be in there of God. Come on, then your eyes are being opened because your faith, you're walking into that rest now, and then what? Unbelief is not there anymore. And when unbelief is not there, then what? The skim of the devil over your eyes will move and you can see clear. Come on. Once that word get in there and do what he has to do because your faith kicked in and say, Lord, I believe. I believe that I don't supposed to be worried about nothing. Because you already in the spoke. When that kick in, that word kicked in, you heard the word. Come on. Faith, you have faith. Because he said that they didn't enter into their rest because of unbelief. They heard the word, but they just didn't mix the word with faith. But this is telling us how to enter into their rest. When you in that word, get in his word, because he says, study. To show yourself approval. Paul told Timothy, sturdy, to show yourself approval unto God. Come on. Work this word in your life. I don't care what the devil trying to call. You better deny that stuff and trust the Lord. He will supply your need. He will give you what you need. He all he asks you to seek me and my righteousness. Don't forget about the righteousness. See, we're saying God with our mouth, but they're not walking in the righteousness. See, I'm supposed to be concerned about your soul just like you be concerned about my soul. We're so supposed to be caring about each and every one of us staying safe. The word of God, the gospel, when it's going forth, take heed. Come on. And let the word work it in your life. Let the word work in your heart. The Bible just told us how the word would do. It will cut. And that means if it cuts you, then just say, out, heal me, Jesus. Because when it cuts you, he trying to get out. He's trying to get deep in that heart and get what's out of there that's not like God. See, that he can what? You can see clear. Glory be to God. And you will know that what? It is Jesus. Now, I must what? Hold fast to my profession. Then I continue to say, it's Jesus. Oh, it's Jesus in my life. No matter who comes and say, well, everybody else doing it. Look what the world, they got some, They got somebody. But if it ain't coming right, it's all right for you to have something going, but it's got to be in righteousness. You got to stand. What do you say? Hold fast. To your profession. Come on. To our profession. You know what your profession is, Jesus Christ. Hold fast to what Christ told you to do. Walk in my righteousness. You seek me and my righteousness. Come on. Don't let the devil get you tired and get you impatient and just say, well, I guess I got to go and get somebody because I'm just lonely or whatever. It's all right you to have somebody, but you got to stay. It's all right for you to to go to the right places, to enjoy life. People think that living for God is sad. You make it sad. Because why? You make it sad because you're, you're not walking in belief. And you're walking in unbelief. But when you trust God, you got the joy of the Lord is your strength. You will not walk, follow a stranger. Come on. He said, because my sheep know my boy. And when you know his voice, then you, you can walk in joy. Because the word says, this is the day we know that God made seven days. And we can get up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice. 
and be glad. No matter what the enemy come against me, I have to rejoice because his word says, and I can speak to that situation. And my God know I've rested in him. Then he will work my situation out. He will turn it around. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Glory be to God. Let's go on. Come on. Let's finish this on out. He said, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings, come on, of our infirmity. It's not according to your fear. I feel, I feel like I should let that go. It ain't according to your feelings. It's according to his righteousness. Come on. Not our way. He said, but was in all points tempted. Come on. Like as we are, come on, Jesus was tempted. He is the high priest. He was tempted just like then you know you will be tempted too. The devil going to tempt you to get away. Jesus was tempted, but he what? Hold fast. That's what he said. Just hold fast to your profession or will you know. Jesus obeyed his father. And he kept telling them, I'm here to do what the, my father's will to obey my father's will and we must be the same because we're in christ the word says we're in christ now and we sit in heavenly places with him so hold fast to your faith or profession it said but was in all turn tempted like as we are but yet without sin jesus was tempted Come on, like we are being tempted. But he's telling us, don't fall away. Glory be to God. Don't fall away. This is what he's telling us. Don't fall away into that sin. Don't fall away and fall into unbelief. When you walk back into sin and practice these sins, practice against what God's words say, then you fall away from that what? Rest. And you entered yourself into unbelief. Glory be to God. Let's go on. The last verse. It says, let us therefore come boldly now. Because Jesus is the high priest. We can go now because we're in Christ. You can go boldly and say, God, you say, come on. That I can, I can ask you anything in your son Jesus' name. See, we can go and say that. God, your word says. You can go boldly to him now because you're in Christ Jesus. Come on, he said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Come on. You can go before God because Christ gave you that access, rightful place, right back with God as you continue to have faith. Because we know with faith and what we know that we know we are in Christ. I'm anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you know that his words say what God's words say, then I know that it's already finished in my life. No weapon formed against me. Gonna pray. That mean it don't mean that the it don't mean that the devil not gonna try to tempt you and form something, but it won't prosper. Come on, it won't prosper as we stay. Before him. Jesus is that high priest. We can go to him. Come on. And Jesus go to his son. He's sitting on the right hand side of the father. Come on. So now we have access. Voted to come unto the throne. Of grace. Come on. That we may attain mercy. Come on. And find grace. Find goodness. Come on. To help us. In the time of. Of need. Glory be to God. You are able to go there. Once you come in Christ Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior today. You have a right. You are in the rightful place with God. You are entering into that rest. And entering into that rest is great. Because you can go to God anytime. Because Jesus is the high priest now. We don't have to go to a priest and go and tell him and confess all this. You can confess it to Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus is constantly washed. 
God, he gave us that right through Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. We just thank God for his word. So we always like to give someone an invitation to come to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and enter right now into that rest. Glory be to God. Enter into that rest. And watch God. Come on, change your life. Watch all the things that you used to do. We won't do it anymore. It's only your faith in him and believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Believe this in your heart. Right now, come to Jesus. He stretched him wide with his hand wide open and said, come into me. And I will come in you to you and rest. And allow you to rest in, in my father. When you in Jesus Christ, God only sees his son. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And this is what he says, how we must enter into that rest. Begin to get in this word. Stir the God word and apply. Not just read it, not just hear it, but be doing it. Let it be a part of your life. Come on. Let it cut. Whatever's not right in me, let it cut it out. And he will. It might hurt, but it's all right. Because what? It'll get better. Hallelujah. It'll get better because your eyes are being opened. And we thank God for his word today. And I pray that someone be in touch. I know it touched me. Glory be to God. Let us stay entering into that rest. Come on. That rest of God. Entering into God's rest. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word today. I love you. And I know God loves you all more. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God.